Hello, I'm Mark Struthers from AAP Automation and welcome to AAP TV. This device in front of me I wish to talk about today is Omron STI's OS32C Safety Laser Scanner. Using time of flight technology for distance measurement, the OS32C will send safety rated outputs upon beam obstruction in a predefined area. It is used as both a warning device and machine operation terminating device when someone enters a hazardous zone. The OS32C is the smaller of two series of safety area scanners that Omron STI offers and is an industry leader in its compact size with a height of only 4.1 inches. It is also lightweight at only 3 pounds and consumes 5 watts of power. The scan area allows 270 degrees with a safety radius of 3 meters and warning zones up to 10 meters. An indicator LED accompanies each beam making it easy to see where an obstruction takes place. Now one thing unique to the industry is you can configure up to 70 predefined, fully customizable and programmable zone sets. Each zone set consists of a safety zone and two warning zones. The best way to illustrate this is to dive right into the programming. So in the software we connect via Ethernet which the software will detect automatically so no need to adjust IP addresses in your control panel. So I open the OS32C configuration tool. There's the IP address of the device. It's going to ask me my access level. You're free to set the password as a supervisor or an operator. No password required for operator. In this case, we'll just log in as operator. Now here is a zone that was pre-configured already for this unit. What I'm going to do is go ahead and click this button up here. It's for system monitoring. Right when I click it, it on the fly detects any objects that are surrounding the device. Notice that if I put my hand towards the front of it, those red dots there, is, uh, it's detecting my hand coming close to it. So this is how we configure our zones. We set it up specifically according to the devices that are found in the room. So when we set up our application, the things that we don't want to trip the unit, we can design around those areas. So notice it has detected everything surrounding the scanner. Now if I go ahead and click this button here to edit zone, it's going to ask me in closing the current mode, which I click OK because we're in monitoring mode but it took a snapshot of everything that was there. Now if I were to move something, this won't update. I have to go back to monitoring mode to get an updated snapshot. But this does give me an idea of what was in the room during the last operating mode scan. Now I can adjust these points right here and configure any shape I want. Anything that is red means it was inside the safety zone at the time of the system monitoring. So ideally I would want to set up my shape to be smaller than that or as to not have anything inflicting in the safety zone because that's going to trip my safety outputs. But this is just to give you an example of how I can configure the zone into anything I want. Now this is default to 270 degrees. I can also set it up to be 180 degrees or even smaller. Anywhere between 1 and 270. I can start as a polygon, a circle, or a rectangle. Notice this button here. This is how I can convert the current zone to a circular segment. In case I get some wacky shape that I don't like and I want to start over, there's a circle. I can also change it to a polygon. Still looks like a circle, but it's got many points. You can accentuate that polygon by moving these around. And then finally, a rectangle. Now if you have a lot of objects, which makes the zone manipulation difficult, what you can do is sculpting, which will automatically detect objects that are in the safety zone and design your safety zone around those objects so that nothing is penetrating the safety zone. So it's this button right here, sculpting. All I have to do is click save or edit zone and it automatically configures that safety zone according to the objects that were in the, the safety zone before. 
So in this case, it's me sitting there next to a computer, a wall, and another device. Made the safety zone quite skewed right there. So that's an example. Any machine or in the room that you don't want to trip the unit that will be there on a normal process, you can configure the zone automatically by clicking, clicking the sculpting button. It's very useful. Now the next thing I want to do is add a zone. So all I have to do is click this button here. This will be zone number two. You can choose which shape to start off as. In this case, I'm going to do a circle for the safety zone, a polygon for the warning zone one, and a circle segment for warning zone two. I'll actually change that to a 180 rectangle. So there's the new zone I added. Notice all the red is meaning there's objects that are currently in the configured safety zone. Now as I said before we can do up to 70 of these zone sets. This is an industry leading feature. To switch between different zones you use the digital inputs. You cannot switch between zones using the Ethernet protocols. It has to be from discrete I.O. The OS32C has eight discrete inputs. We switch between zones by using any combination of these inputs being on or off. Now the last thing I want to show you is system monitoring where it records. So if I go ahead and click this button here, seeing as in most applications our devices will not be stationary the whole time, we want to record a process. We want to be able to view what is going on from the sensor's point of view while say a robot arm is moving. For example, if we have a dual zone guarding robot area, we're free to be on, say, the left side of the room while the robot is doing its process on the right hand side. And then we exit the room and hit a button, the robot will move to the left hand side of the room. We're now free to be on the right hand side of the room. These inputs can be configured to switch between these two zones. Now we need to be able to monitor this so that we can configure the zones accordingly. The recording option is a great way to do that. So right now it's recording. I'll go ahead and move my hand around. And the pre-specified time is complete. The memory block is quick disconnect, so if you need to replace the scanner, you can take off the memory block and reattach the new scanner. No further configuration or programming is required and you get to keep all of your previously stored data without ever having to reconnect your computer. The newest feature of the OS32C, and as a first in its industry, is data management over Ethernet IP. You can now manage multiple units over a local area network. The Ethernet IP protocol allows you to check status, analyze the cause of an emergency stop, and report measurement data. Measurement data ranges up to 50 meters, which is much longer than the safety rated value. Remember that the Ethernet IP protocol is for data passing only and is not involved with the safety portion of the unit. A safety laser scanner may not always be the best choice in a safety application. In a dirty or wet environment, direct sunlight, or a small scan area, it's better to go with a safety mat. In a vertical application, we typically recommend safety light curtains. The laser scanner is a great choice for robot cells, transfer stations, loading stations, presses, automatic guided vehicles, or anything requiring scan zone variation. Laser scanners, as with light curtains, by standard, need to be ran off their own dedicated power supply. This unit is considered a Type 3 safety laser scanner and complies with IEC 61496-1 and IEC 61496-3. Under ISO 13849-1, it is performance level D and category three. At AEP Automation, we help you see that machine safety and productivity don't need to be competing objectives. Outside of accidents, there are a number of hidden costs when safety standards are not current, including compliance fines, workers' comp, downtime, and lost productivity. A properly safeguarded machine will actually increase productivity. We will be happy to choose the safety equipment that gives you the most value, implement them correctly, and provide the support to make sure everything works. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.